Hi, I'm Mike Owner of the InGroove in Phoenix, Arizona. I get asked all the time on the channel, have you ever heard any of the electric recording company's records? And the answer to that question has always been no. Uh, the electric recording company, for you guys who don't know, they're a reissue label out of Great Britain that normally is thought of as a classical reissue label. They've started doing jazz records lately, but this is a company that does super limited edition records. They do 300, no more than 300 of any particular title. A lot of cases where they do a record that's in mono and stereo, they'll do 150 of each. So there's no more than 300 of that particular title in production. They're super, super limited. They do it on a restored valve, vintage valve, Ortofon valve gear, if I'm not mistaken. You know, and they do the old school printing process. You know, it's a high quality presentation. And they announce them, they immediately sell out in minutes. And I've never, you know, I've, I've never been able to purchase one. One of my followers here on the channel contacted me and said, you know, would you like to make a trade for a Music Matters record? And I said, yeah. And, you know, he told me what he had. And we made a deal for uh, Sonny Rollins, Way Out West. This is actually my favorite Sonny Rollins record. So, uh, Got the record. He said, you know, wait, I'm getting a shipment from ERC coming in. Go ahead and wait. I'll ship it to you in the original box. I think, you know, this is a good idea because it's going to be some, you know, bulletproof box that you would ship a record that costs a little over 400 US dollars. So, you know, I have pretty high hopes at this point because you're talking about a $400 plus brand new record to get one of these things shipped over from the United States. So I get the box. Box looks something like this. It's this is the box. So, box comes, you know, ERC logo. First thing I notice is it's kind of loose inside. Well, I get the record and it is sealed. You know, it comes in this electric recording company kind of a laser disc type sleeve, which I'm not a huge fan of because these actually uh if you've ever stored anything in one of these types of sleeves long term, they uh, cause bag rash on vinyl. So not the coolest thing to see right out of the box. But, you know, inside you've got, you know, the nice tissue paper over. And I'm thinking to myself, this is quite a quite a package. You know, limited number sleeve, you know, limited number edition. You know, your edition number out of 300. And then I get the record. And I'm immediately drawn to the fact that the record sleeve is like super bowed, okay? So I notice it's super bowed, bowed, and then I notice right on the top, I don't know if you can see that, there's a four inch seam split. And I'm thinking to myself, oh man, you know, I contact the guy who sent it to me and I'm like, you know, at first I'm thinking, you know, he packed it wonky. Uh, it was sealed, you know, the record was sealed. They seal it with this, uh, this outer uh, security seal, you know, that kind of wraps over the record. Thinking to myself, you know, he kind of sealed this thing a little wonky. Maybe it got blown out. So I contacted him and he said, let me contact ERC. And he contacted me a little later and said, they're sending me another record. I'll send that to you when I get it. You know, and I'm thinking to myself, well, this is kind of, you know, that's good. You're paying an ungodly amount of money for a reissue record. It should be, you know, really perfect. So I get it and it is sent in the exact same box. Now this time it was never even opened from ERC, but it's the same story. Big difference is, you know, a bunch of cardboard filler pads. Big difference is now, the record is stored a little bit differently. It's still brand new, but it's stored in its outer sleeve behind the record. Uh, so there's no seam splits. Get the record out, you know, tissue paper, the whole nine yards, we're going same, same thing. Get to tissue paper and Check out the record. I examine the record. Now I get back to the first record. The first record had a lot of little micro scratches on it. 
and you know, you can kind of, it's going to be, you know, I'm not going to be able to really show it to you on YouTube, but the record had all these little micro scratches because it had blown out the side of the paper inner and you know, it was rubbing, poking its self out of, you know, the outside of the jacket. And it was kind of scratching up the record. So they sent the record as well. Well, I got the new record. Jacket's fine. And now this record, nice and clean, no issues. But then I notice at the beginning of track, uh, let's see here where we're at. I'll put a picture up of this too. I'm noticing at the end of side two, it's like bubbles in the vinyl. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This is a $450 product. What's going on here? This is insanity. Okay. Contacted the guy, you know, and I feel like a turd at this point because, you know, I'm not happy. I'm sending, you know, I'm doing a nice trade here for a really nice high-end record that I know is going to come out of the package perfect because, you know, it's a high-end Music Matters record. They've all come out of the package perfect. Very, very seldomly is anything wrong. So now I got this back-to-back -back issues. No fault to the guy who traded it to me because at first I thought maybe the packing was a little wonky, but it wasn't. It was the exact same packaging that ERC uses to ship these records around the world. And I'm assuming presumably with no issues, although this is not the way I believe you should pack records. Records need to have pressure. I would do cardboard and I would tape it. This way there's nothing moving around. Uh, movement is a problem. Movement causes damage. But I email him back and I'm like, you know, out of these two records, I'm probably going to get, you know, I got the good jacket and I'm going to get one that sounds good and we'll put it in the clean jacket. Well, I get home and I put it on and man, I am extremely unimpressed with the sound. You know, then we get to the end of side one. We get to the last track. Uh, which is uh, Come Gone. And there's these massive drop-offs, like like tape damage. You know, it's the equivalent of, you know, if any of you real real guys out there, if you ever played a real to real that has a lot of damage, you get these, like, massive dropouts. And essentially what a dropout is is the volume goes way, way down. So, you know, first thing I always do when I hear dropouts is, you know, if you're not used to it, if you don't expect it to be in a recording, you're like, you know, what's going on with the system? I need to check out my system. And no, dropouts are part of the record. So and I'm thinking to myself at this point in time, this is, this is absolutely crazy. We have a $450 brand new record. Okay. $450 brand new record. Now the $450 is... You can get a lot of really good versions of this record for that. The recently out of print deluxe version, which comes with a bonus disc that the disc one is all analog. Now that's mono, but keep in mind this is stereo. I got this absolutely. Look how clean my beautiful mono original is. I paid less than 450 bucks for this. Sound on this is un unbelievably good. Analog Productions recently, you know, within the last 10 or so years, maybe this was 15 years ago, they did a double disc 45 RPM. These records sound unbelievably good, all of them. And all of them can be obtained for less than $450. So I'm thinking about this and I'm like saying to myself, this is, what the hell's going on here? You know, you hear about reviews on this company and everybody that does a review speaks very highly of the company. So I had a lot of high hopes, but the first thing I thought about is, you know what? How many times have you guys ever heard a bad review? That doesn't happen. What tends to happen in the hi-fi records, reviews, more times than not, it's more common with records, but when it comes to high-end gear, bad reviews just never get written. There's bad products out there. People don't talk about bad products. These reviewers don't talk about bad products. What they do, they just put it you know, they don't want to piss anybody off. So they just put this stuff to the wayside. You go on Pop Psych, you look around at ERC Records, you'll notice there's a lot of these promos floating around. I'm thinking to myself, you know, what's going on? Are these record reviewers getting so many free records that they don't, you know, I, and they're able to sell them for four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars after the fact. 
they're getting so many free records that maybe they just don't want to say, you know, they don't want to damage the gravy train. But very, very disappointed for a $450 record. This should come out sounding unbelievable. Another thing I'm thinking of is, you know, I doubt the fact, they don't mention it anywhere on the website, but I doubt you're even getting a master, you know, you might be getting an analog product, but I doubt you're even getting a, you know, like this. This comes from the master tape. I don't think you're getting a master tape here. I just don't think Concord is taking their precious Sonny Rollins way out west master tape and sticking it on a plane to go to England. Master tapes don't, aren't easily accessible to very many people that do reissues. I mean, these manufacturers, especially since the Universal Fire, realize the precious nature of their master tapes. So my best guess is maybe you're getting a 30 IPS or maybe even a 15 IPS straight reel-to-reel -reel master transfer that they're sending off and having this done with. But yeah, I mean, overall, I wasn't impressed with the record. I wasn't impressed with the packaging of the record, and I definitely wasn't impressed with the sound. This is a record, if it has tape flaws, you know, if you have dropouts in the tape that are that significant, the tape shouldn't get redone, or the record shouldn't be done. It just should not happen. You should not have a $450 brand new record hit the marketplace that has major defects like that, especially when you've got multiple copies that can be obtained for less that have much, much, much better sound. So, you know, with the numbers of records they're making, though, it's super, super, 300 records is nothing. And these guys are going to be selling out every single record that they ever make. I have no doubt about that. And I'm sure, you know, this could have been a situation where I just had really bad luck. When I contacted the guy, and told him what was going on, you know, he tells me everything I get from them, 90% of it is great, which it should be, in my opinion, a little higher. He could have just been speaking off the cuff with that 90%. But, you know, I took the two records home, and I'm trying to find one, and we've got one that has paper chunks or defects in the vinyl that makes all kinds of popping noise. And record one is so extremely noisy. It's you think of a modern audio file record, and I was just, you know, I put on my original afterwards, and I'm like, this sucker is like, this is an audio file record. This beautifully well done contemporary record. Contemporary, by the way, guys, is one of the absolute greatest labels of all time. The recording engineer at the time, Roy Dunan, unbelievably talented. Uh, the stuff that was coming out of contemporary in this era is just, you know, it's, it's, unbelievably good it's on par with you know van geller and the best mastering it you know the best excuse me the best recording engineers of all time that contemporary label is fantastic so yeah i mean it was uh noisy made by a defective tape with a defective tape and it was uh yeah it was not so impressive so i don't foresee myself becoming <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to get another one of these things to review because I'm definitely at this point in time, I'm not forking out 450 bucks for one of these things. I mean, I'm all for modern audiophile reissues. I talk about that stuff on the channel religiously, but there has to be, you know, within reason. I mean, 100, 100 a quarter for some of these mobile fidelity one steps, but they sound the best in a lot of cases, that the record has ever sounded ever. Like, that's worth paying $125 for. But I'm not sure in this scenario what exactly you're paying $450 for. Maybe I could say, you know, I'm one of only 150 people that I, you know, have this record in the world, but, you know, I don't do this to collect it. I do it because I enjoy, you know, music. I enjoy listening to records. I enjoy the sound. I enjoy the experience. But... This, unfortunately for me, wasn't a very good experience. I'm sure other people will have their, uh, will have other things to say, but I will never get on here and be like, you know, I will never, I don't lie to myself and tell myself just because I have a really expensive record that it's fantastic. Because like I said, in a lot of cases, it's not fantastic. But uh, yeah, it's uh, been an interesting experience. If I ever get one traded into the store, or I ever see another one, 
I'll be happy to listen to it and come back online. I'm curious what some of the other ones sound like. Uh, this could be just an isolated incident. It could be a fluke. It could be a weird, you know, scenario. But yeah, so unfortunately, you know, I got to say this. They were extremely good about sending this guy another one. So I'm going to send both records back to him and I'm going to tell him, you know, look, you're the original buyer of these records. You need to deal with them. And, I, you know, you should seek satisfaction. You're a regular customer of theirs. I'm guessing they're going to take care of them. But yeah, so that's my initial experience of the electric recording company. Uh, talking about the cover, though, I mean, it is, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a sight to behold. It's quite nice. But is it, slide this out, I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of on there because it's bent, but it's a sight to behold, but it's not, I mean, this is, you know, I like the fact that it's a laminated cover and a paste on back as opposed to like a modern tone poet. But, you know, when you look at the front, this isn't really much better than, you know, a tone poet. When you look at the front, I mean, the back is obviously to a different degree. But yeah, when you think about the Tone Poets, when you think about the new uh, uni titles that are coming out, the Coltrane Ballads, the Love Supreme, the Nina Simones, uh, the Getz Gilberto, although it has a few dropouts, significantly less noticeable than this. Uh, most people don't even know they're there. It's amazing that there is, this is a golden age for vinyl because there is a lot of killer, killer stuff coming out at reasonable money. But they make stuff for all folks because this is the stuff on the other end of the spectrum. And I'm all for spending a lot of money on records. I do it all the time, but I'm not thinking this is going to be a, a path I continue down. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time.